Hi everybody, it's me, Miss Connaughton, and I'm going to read you a story today called Blueberries for Sal. This story was written and illustrated by Robert McCloskey, and if you look really closely, you'll notice that it has a special medal up in the corner. That is called the Caldecott Honor. That sticker on the front cover means that this book received the Caldecott Honor. That's a special award that you get for the pictures in a book. So you'll notice that when we read this book, pictures are very detailed, but they don't have much color to them, do they? The whole book, I'll just kind of flip through before we read. There's no colors in the book. It's all done with just one color and it still received an award for the pictures. You don't need to put lots of different colors into your pictures in order to make them look extremely detailed. You could always try to do what Robert McCloskey did when you draw a picture, when you try to illustrate some words that you wrote to make a book. You could just use one color. It still looks really great if you go really slowly and carefully. So let's go ahead and start to read the book, Blueberries for Sal. The inside of the front cover, no words, just a picture. Blueberries for Sal. Here's the title page. Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. Remember, he wrote the words Andy to the pictures. And here's the story. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail and her mother brought her large tin pail to put berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother. Then we will have food for the winter. So they're going to a blueberry hill, a hill that's covered in blueberries, and they're going to pick the blueberries and can them. When they talk about canning the blueberries, that means that they're going to put them into special jars and put a cap on tight so that they stay fresh over the winter. Have you ever picked blueberries? I know two very special children who are living on a blueberry farm right now. I hope that you really enjoy this story. You might have a lot of connections. You might have a lot of connections while you're reading this, while, you, while you're listening to this story, if you're living on a blueberry farm. If you've ever gone blueberry picking though, you'll have some connections too, so listen really carefully. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them into her little tin pail. Kerplunk, kerplank, kerplunk. She picked three more berries and she ate them. Then she picked more berries and dropped one into the pail. Kerplunk, and the rest she ate. And then little Sal ate all four, four blueberries out of her pail. So she's picking them, but what is she doing? Is she saving any of them? No, she's eating them all. Oh my goodness, I wonder what her mom is going to think about that. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them into her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry into her mother's pail. It didn't sound Kerplink! Because the bottom of the pail was already covered with berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back. Though she didn't really mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries right up close to the one that she had put in. <laughs> Do you think little Sal likes blueberries? I think she does too. Her mother doesn't notice that she's reaching into the pail and eating them. Every time the mom picks a blueberry, puts it in the pail, I think maybe little Sal might start eating her mom's blueberries too. Let's see. Her mother stopped picking and she said, Now Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. Her mother went back to her picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. Look at little Sal. Is she collecting the blueberries like her mom asked her to? <laughs> nope. Have you ever done that when you've gone blueberry picking, just sat down somewhere to just eat the blueberries because you didn't want to collect them anymore? 
I know I have. I love blueberries. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. So who else is on Blueberry Hill? Little Bear. Little Bear and, and Little Bear's mom. And way over on the other side of the hill, we have Little Sal and Little Sal's mom. So Little Sal and her mom are picking the blueberries to bring them home and can them for next winter. Remember, that means that you put them in a special container, seals them off and keeps them fresh all through the year. But do bears eat blueberries out of containers? Out of cans? No. No, they don't. Bears store up their food by, for the winter by eating it. They eat a lot of extra food. Eating a lot of extra food helps them to store up fat for the winter. There's no bears on the blueberry hills that I've ever been to though. Have you ever seen a bear when you've been out blueberry picking? I don't think so, neither have I. Little Bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat some berries. Then he had to hustle along to catch up. So Little Bear is doing, is doing a lot of the same things that Little Sal was doing. Little Bear is going slowly and eating a lot of blueberries and then having to run really fast to catch up to her mom too. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat down right in the middle and ate blueberries. <laughs> so little Sal is sitting in a bush somewhere eating blueberries. She's enjoying them. And little Bear is sitting down in a bush somewhere eating blueberries and he's enjoying them. Look at his face gobbling up all of those blueberries. Over on the other side of the hill, Little Sal ate all of the berries she could reach from where she was sitting. And then she started out to find her mother. So she's all done eating. She must be nice and full. And now she's going to go for a walk around to find her mother. What do you suppose she might see? Let's see. She heard a noise from around a rock and she thought, that is my mother walking along. But it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and flew away, saying, Ka, ka, ka. Then she heard another noise in the bushes, and she thought, That is surely my mother, and I will go that way. Have you ever seen crows near your house? If you live on a blueberry farm, have you ever seen crows eating your blueberry farm? You'll have to let me know. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if crows really love blueberries or not. <gasps> but it wasn't little Sal's mother. It was little Bear's mother instead. She was tramping along eating berries and thinking about storing up food for the winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind. Does little Sal look afraid? No. Little Sal's used to walking around out in the fields with her mother being close by and she knows that her mom is nearby. I don't know if I would follow a mother bear if I found her in the woods though, would you? I think so. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all of the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. Little Bear heard a noise from over a stump and he thought, that is my mother walking along. A little Bear and Little Sal are so similar. So many similar things keep happening to them. Oh, there's Little Bear up on the stump. Oh, but look, it was not his mother. It was a mother partridge and her children. Remember, a mother partridge is a kind of bird a bird that walks around on the ground, almost like a duck or a very, very, very small turkey, chicken. They stopped eating berries and they all hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and he thought, that is surely my mother. I will hustle that way. 
Hasso means you go really, really fast. Really fast. He's looking for his mom really quickly. Oh, so Little Bear hustled it. Uh-oh, who did Little Bear see? Look in the distance, who's that? That's Little Sal's mom. So Little Sal found the little, little Sal found Little Bear's mother, and then Little Bear found Little Sal's mother. Oh no, I hope that everybody finds the right mom by the end of the book, let's see. It was Little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along, picking berries, and thinking about canning them for next winter. Little Bear hustled right along behind. <laughs> So the little baby bear is following the human mom and the little baby human, baby Sal, is following the bear mom. Little bear and little Sal's mother and little Sal and little bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. All right, let's look really carefully at the picture. You see the side? Can you see little bear? with mom over there. Now let's go over to this side of the book. All the way over to here. Can you see on this side of the mountain, mama bear with little Sal following along behind her? Right there. Remember the author of this book won an award for the, for the detailed illustrations for the beautiful pictures. So make sure that you're looking really careful at them. Even though they only have one color, they're very beautiful and detailed. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and thought that it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, munch, munch, eat all your, eat all you can possibly hold. The mom isn't even turning around. She's just eating and eating and talking to, <laughs> talking to what she thinks is Little Bear. Little Sal said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them, kerplunk, 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 into her small tin pail. There's the mother, she hasn't realized yet that she doesn't have the right child behind her. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a noise like kerplunk. <coughs> she cried, <coughs> choking on a mouthful of blueberries. This is not my child. Where is Little Bear? She took one good look at Little Sal and began to back away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. Remember, bears and other wildlife, they don't want to hurt people if they see you out walking. They would never come hurt you. They're even more afraid of you than you are of them. So remember that the next time that you go for a walk somewhere out in the woods. You want to be careful, but you don't have to be afraid. Then Mother Bear turned around and walked off very, very fast to hunt for Little Bear. She needs to find her baby. Little Sal's mother, so here's the mom of Little Sal. Little Sal's mother heard Little Bear tramping along behind her and she thought that it was Little Sal. So she just kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. Who does mom think is hiding behind her? She thinks that it's her daughter. <laughs> Little Bear padded up, so he walked up slowly and he peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted to taste a few of the berries that he saw inside, but there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful instead. Do you remember when Little Sal did that way back at the back of the way back at the beginning of the story when she dropped one pail in her mom's, she dropped one blueberry into her mom's pail. Then she went to take just that one back out, but she accidentally, she said that she accidentally took a whole handful. Look now, little bear's doing the same thing. Look at his face and mother doesn't even know that it's a bear. Mother thinks that that is little Sal. Now Sal, said little Sal's mother without even turning around to see who it was. You need to run along and pick your own berries. Remember, mother wants to can these berries for next winter. Little Bear, however, just reached in and tasted another tremendous mouthful and he almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Do you think mother will turn around now? 
You ready to see the next page? <laughs> Watch mother's face. Are you ready? <laughs> Little Sal's mother finally turned around and she gasped. <gasps> My goodness! You are not little Sal. Where, oh, where is my child? Little bear just sat munching and swallowing and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even, sm even very small bears like little bear. And then she turned away. Then she turned and walked away quickly to look for little Sal. <laughs> now let's look at the faces again. How is mother bear? How is mother feeling? <laughs> Very afraid. How is the little bear feeling? Not afraid at all. Let's go back for a second to the page where... Let's go back to the page where mother bear notices that little Sal is behind her. Look. How is mother bear feeling? Look at those lines around her eyes. Yeah, that shows that she's feeling afraid. She's feeling scared. What about little Sal? Does little Sal look afraid? No, nope, not at all. So the moms are both afraid. The mother bear is afraid. And then little Sal's mother is afraid. But now let's look at the little ones. Are the little ones afraid? Little Sal is certainly not scared. The little bear is certainly not scared. Look at his face. He looks happy. <laughs> She hadn't gone very far before she heard a kerplink, kerplink, kerplunk. She knew just what made that kind of noise. Oh, mother looks relieved now. She knows there's no danger. There's no danger for her, her little Sal. Little Sal's right there. And little bear's mother had not hunted very long either before she heard a hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew just what made that kind of a noise. What is it? A little bear eating blueberries. Little bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way and full of food stored up for next winter. Let's see if we can find them in this picture. Oh, here they are walking home. Do you see them? And little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking berries all the way, and they drove home with food to can for next winter. A whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. So how many pails of blueberries is that? One pail and then three more pails. That's easy. One plus three equals four. That's right. They went home with four full pans of blueberries or pails, three, four full pails of blueberries. I bet they would have had five if little Sal hadn't eaten so many and the little bear hadn't eaten so many. And that is the end. But look at the way that the book ends. Let's look at the picture on the back cover. Let's go back for a minute to look at the front cover. Ready? You see the picture on the front? Does that remind you of the picture on the back? It should because they're the same. What are they doing in the picture? It shows what happened when they got home from their blueberry trip. If you look over here, you can see sugar, sugar and some measuring cups and they have some things on the stove. I wonder for my little friends who are living on the blueberry farm, making delicious blueberry jam that tastes so good and all, all other kinds of delicious blueberry treats. Does this look like Something that happens at your house? Do you, do you can the blueberries after you pick them? Do you need sugar to make the jam that, to make the jam that you, that you can? Do you need to use sugar? Or do you need to use any of these special tools? What's going on over here? It looks like mother is pouring a hot pan, hot pan full of something that just came off the stove. She's pouring it into the jar. And here's some more jars of blueberries. I can't wait to hear. I wonder if that, I wonder if that is the way that blueberry jam is made. Well, if you've ever made jam or you've ever gone blueberry picking, 
or you live on a blueberry farm right now, or you'd like to go blueberry picking someday, and you have some questions about blueberries, you just let me know because I am friends with some blueberry experts and they can answer any question that you have. I hope you enjoyed our story, Blueberries for Sal. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.